Dead by Daylight is arguably in its best state ever, but it's still not enough for a lot of people. I recently ran a poll asking gamers if they've ever taken a break from the game and why. Thousands of responses later, I have a better understanding of what DVD's biggest problem is and that's what we're going to be breaking down in this video. But first, a word from our sponsor. Water. Drink it. As I mentioned, I genuinely believe the game is in the best spot it's ever been in. It recently had a pretty strong year, and it's not that buggy. At least, compared to how it used to be. I first started playing in late 2021, in the middle of the artist chapter. But as I made more and more content around the game, I learned a lot about what I missed out on. Specifically, all of DVD's issues from launch up until that point. The bugs, the queue times, the matchmaking, the hacking, the hair pulling updates, and although a lot of that is better nowadays, the game still has a massive problem. One that was around back then and is still prevalent today. Repetitiveness. Matches feel the same. Think about it in this way. At the time of this video, there are 35 killers, 700 plus add-ons, 255 perks, and 48 maps. Additionally, the placement of everything on the map is randomized. On paper, due to all this variety, it really should seem like every match would be different. I mean, it is when you first start out. There's a lot to learn, but when you already have hundreds or maybe even thousands of hours in the game, all the matches start to blend together. That is overwhelmingly what you guys have told me. Let's take a look at that poll I conducted. With over 18,000 votes, 12% have never taken a break. 15% left for a few weeks. 47%, nearly half, have left the game behind for months. Followed by 27%, who spent entire years away. As for the reason why people took breaks, I tallied up the comments and it was very clear what their reasoning was. These will absolutely not come as a shock to you. The third most popular reason was because of bad game updates, character reworks that just didn't sit right with them, and also behavior missing the mark when attempting to balance out gameplay and perks. That leads into the second most popular reason people left. They were exhausted and burnt out. The game was just too stressful. Having to try hard or to play meta perks for a chance at winning, especially with how inconsistent matchmaking feels sometimes. It's caused them to not have the mental energy to play more. What's the point if it'll just make them upset and rage quit? That was especially the case for busy people who are coming back home from a rough day at school or work. The little gaming time they had was spent on something that just frustrated them. Then there's reason number one that people leave this game behind. It simply stopped being fun. They were tired of it. Tired of either the constant player toxicity that the game breeds, or tired of the same old same old. That's why lots of people in this category mentioned that they only come back for stuff like events and to complete battle pass challenges. That really made sense to me because I was that way for other games. In the past, I've spent hundreds of hours on Overwatch and Apex Legends, but at a certain point, I realized I was only playing to complete challenges, to get rewards, and eventually, I just stopped. You shouldn't be playing a game if you're not having fun with it. Luckily, I'm not entirely at that point yet with Dead by Daylight, but it's that type of boredom that drives people to play the game in different ways. Like personal challenges, or win streaks, or maybe even, I don't know, playing in a unique way such as I do at twitch.tv forward slash Leas, live every Monday and Friday at 7pm central. But if you can't always catch these special streams, no worries, because I actually have a brand new stream highlights channel. I'd really appreciate it if you guys take a moment to check it out and maybe even subscribe if you like what you see. The link for that is down below. Thanks a bunch. Now back to what I was yapping about. Most people leave this game because they're bored. And that sucks because some said that they went from playing every single day to not at all. Yes, this poll is a small sample size compared to the millions of players that are out there, but I feel like the sentiment is still the same across the board. Just take a look at the comments whenever Behavior posts anything. What I found really interesting from this poll is that for the people who stopped playing themselves, they're still involved in the community and enjoy watching others play it. They just can't do it themselves. The love for the game is still there, albeit weaker and faded. Something else I noticed was the amount of people who were there in the game's first years, who left for all these same reasons, but they came back much later and were genuinely surprised by how much has improved since then. That, alongside all the new content that's come out since they left, helped them actually enjoy the game again. 
But for the rest of us who have been playing more recently, we know that chapters aren't always enough. We see new killers used a lot in the first two weeks, but then after that, they just get thrown into the regular killer pool, where unless you play as them, your encounters are just gonna go down tremendously because you're just gonna get matched up with already existing killers because they are the majority. As for new perks, unless they're super strong, the frequency of their use is gonna become limited as they just fall under certain niches of gameplay, so they join most of the non-meta perks in that regard. This all goes without mentioning the balance changes that these updates bring. Because at this point, this game is basically impossible to get a perfect 50-50 split. That level of balance will never happen. Someone will always end up getting upset because of changes. So with all that being said, what can be done to address the repetitive nature of the game? In my opinion, Dead by Daylight works best as a party game, and that should be leaned into. Behavior has already toyed around with this in the form of limited time modifiers. So far, the main game has received two. Lights Out, a perkless mode where your visibility is limited. My Little Oni, an April Fool's event where a gigantic Oni chases around tiny survivors. Then there's Prop Hunt, a very popular type of game that's only available on the mobile version of Dead by Daylight. The general sentiment with these two in the main game was that they lost their novelty pretty quickly and there wasn't enough to continuously capture people's interest in them. Although, to be fair, one of them was just an April Fool's thing so that one makes sense. While we're talking about this, something else struck me about this mode. You couldn't choose any licensed survivor and every character was set to their default skin. The default skin thing I can understand because, again, the event was supposed to be just a small thing, no pun intended. Maybe having different cosmetics getting resized caused too many issues, so it was easier to lock them away for it. Regarding the licensed characters also being unavailable, I don't have an easy answer for that. You were able to select them in the lights out mode. The difference here is that the models themselves undergo a change. They get shrunk down. This is 100% my own speculation. It is possible that due to behavior's licensing deals, they'd have to consult with every single IP holder about drastically changing the models like that. This is the only thing I can think of of why they were grayed out. If so, that could pose an issue later on for any other game modes that involve model alterations. It would suck if we would just not get licensed characters for it. As for DBD Mobile's exclusive prop hunt, lots of players wanted to come to the main game. I'd love it if we got it into the main game. It'd be so fun to play with others and my community. That's the keyword here. Fun. What a game mode like this does is remove the frustrations of the meta. There's really not much of a need to balance anything if it's done right. I always subscribe to this line of thinking. I don't care if I win or if I lose. As long as I'm having a good time. As long as I'm having fun. The absolute best thing that could happen here is, and allow me to be full on delusional, but the best thing we could get is custom modes. And no, that doesn't mean what we currently have in the form of custom games. I'm talking actual full-on customs where we could set it up any way we want. Similar to how Overwatch did it with the workshop. Players were given almost full control of everything and they were able to come up with lots of new, fun, creative ways to play. I remember it being a genuine breath of fresh air and spending tons of hours here. Imagine something like this coming to Dead by Daylight. Think of the possibilities. Timed billy races on an obstacle course. True hide and seek where it's every Dwight for themselves with the last one getting hatched spawned on them. And of course, there are the more popular ideas that have already been out there, such as first person survivor and two versus eight. As fun as letting your imagination run wild in a workshop mode sounds, I'm sorry to say it's not going to happen anytime soon, if ever. The reason for that is quite simple. Behavior never in their wildest dreams imagined that DVD would get as big as it did. It was just supposed to be a small indie title. Because of that, their internal code wasn't exactly the cleanest. As the game grew in popularity, the devs added more and more content, further complicating the code. Over time, this led to an uptick in bugs. They fix one and three seemingly unrelated others show up. This is why the Twins chapter update had so many issues. It was the first time there would technically be two killers at play, causing all sorts of unintended effects. 
Although it's not as bad as it once was, as they do seem to have improved the game's inner workings. Stuff still breaks all the time. In fact, I'm writing this sentence the same week that the PTB for the Twins rework came out and it was rough. Very fitting that it's their PTB where the most stuff is broken. But going back to what I said about how intertwined and complex the game code is, that's also probably why it takes so long to get quality of life features. It took years to get something as seemingly simple as a search bar. The same goes for us getting a faster bloodweb system, which was initially only available for prestige characters. It wouldn't be for many more months until this faster system would be available for all. The game's internal structure isn't built well enough to have stuff like this released in a timely manner. In December of 2023, the developers held an Ask Me Anything on Reddit. Someone asked, Do you plan for survivors to be able to inspect other survivors' builds before the game starts? Just to make people with less than 4 players coordinate more efficiently. Their response was, This is something we've also thought about but are currently restricted due to flexibility in the lobby screens. We are updating these old screens gradually and you should see some improvement over the next years. Smile. Yep, you heard me right. A long requested feature that could be so incredibly useful would take years. When I first read this, I remember taking a comical double take and had to look at it over again to make sure I didn't misinterpret it. Years. <laughs> That is not reassuring. It's worth mentioning here that the reason DVD Mobile always seems to be getting a lot of good stuff and the aforementioned lobby screen loadout previews is because it was made much later after Dead by Daylight. Its internal structure is stronger, more flexible, unlike the main game. That's why I think that the next best thing would be to have a wellness chapter. One where there's no new content, no new killer survivor perks map, nothing that we're used to getting every few months. Instead, that time could be spent focusing on the well-being of the game, updating those old systems, cleaning up code, strengthening the internal structures, addressing balance issues, making the game better overall. But again, unfortunately, that's just not something that's likely to happen anytime soon. In that same Reddit AMA I mentioned, the devs were also asked about this and their response was that there are no concrete plans for an update dedicated to health. <sighs> For further context, it's important to remember that at the end of the day, behavior is a company. A company's goals are to make money, to keep making money. The developers answer to the corporate heads, and they answer to their investors. If the company didn't release a new chapter with new purchasable content every few months, their initial bottom line would shrink. They'd make a lot less money that quarter. Yeah, if they invest in the game's health, they could be more consistently successful later on since more and more people would be willing to play, thus increasing the player count and improving the game's reputation overall. People would feel a lot better about buying from a game they truly love and have fun in. But the powers at B want money now, money now, now, profit now, gimme! So... Yeah, that's really cool. What this all means is that we just have to rely on these upcoming game modes to really shake things up. And that kind of sucks because these kinds of modes are taking so long to implement. And it's likely that the next few will also be limited as they continue testing. At the very least, they are considering a wider range of them as proven by the satisfaction survey that they sent out in December of 2023. In it, they asked players to rate how much they would enjoy these game modes. This is actually really promising, and I might just be on maximum copium, but I am really hoping that these modes can be implemented well. That we won't have a situation where you only play them for like three times and then never touch it again. Something else that gives me hope is the idea of getting randomly assigned perks. This has already been implemented twice, albeit in the form of challenges that are then locked when you complete them. Having this type of feature become a permanent option would really make things more fun because it encourages people to get comfortable with perks they may have never selected. Look at me in the eyes and tell me what percentage of total perks you've ever used. Remember, right now, there are 255 of them. Your all-time favorite could just be sitting in a corner 
gathering dust. But with this type of option, it would bring in more variety it matches, lowering the amount of times you see the same top 10 perks. I'm really glad that the devs acknowledge people's desire for this because I think it would be really helpful for the current core gameplay side of things. But at the end of the day, all this is really out of our hands. So what can we do if we want to play and keep having fun? This is what I tell everyone that's new to the game and honestly what's kept me going so far. Don't take it seriously. It's just a game. If you're not having fun, if it's too repetitive, if you're frustrated, then just stop playing. Play, play something, something else. else. See, I could say that without getting any flack because I don't work on the game. But yeah, games are supposed to be fun. It's a lot easier to do that if you don't treat every single match like your life depends on it, if you don't give in to the toxic side, if you remember that most of us are just trying to have a good time. From the poll I conducted, the people that consistently play seem to have this exact same mindset. For me, the best moments in this game, what I live for, are those really close games, those really tough and fair matches, those intense moments where you can't believe a play worked, the matches where you end on a smile no matter if you lost or won. I'm not criticizing this game just to complain or because it's a game that's easy to criticize. I'm saying all this because I still love it and I want it to improve. I wanted to succeed. We should of course still be vocal about what changes we want to see, about all the issues we want solved. But we also have to remember the impact we have on each other, the impact we have on the community, and how much we let this game impact us. Thanks for watching.